evening and welcome to uh, Greater Grace Church for Jasper and Ellesmere Port. Uh, we're here live on Facebook for a little while and tonight we're uh, joined by our distinguished panel of experts, <laughs> 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 Jim and Anne Mulligan and Stephen Latimer and Kathy Craddock. So, uh, you can give them all a round of applause like we <laughs> normally do on these game shows. Uh, <laughs> Uh, the prizes are, well, eternal life. So uh, <laughs> we'll uh, move swiftly on. Uh, yeah. Uh, so uh, just to uh, fill you in, uh, you can join us at 11 o'clock here on uh, this uh, Sunday. We won't mm. actually have an 8 o'clock online this Sunday. as a, as a slight change from normality. If, uh, but uh, next Wednesday we'll be back. Uh, come in and ask us about other details if you want to know about prayer or about uh, outreach or about Bible school. Come in and ask in person. Mm. So, um, yeah, let's pray. Uh, mm. Let's give this time to the Lord and, and, and just trust Him. <coughs> Father, we just thank you, Lord. Now we worship you for who you are, Lord. Thank you, Lord, the, the God of wonders, uh, the God of all grace, the God of mercy. Mm. The God of all comfort, the God of peace, and the God of, of truth, uh, the God of our, our life, Lord. We thank you uh, for who you are, for every name and every title that we find in your word. Uh, encourage us tonight, Lord, we pray uh, that we would find hope and peace and uh, truth in you, Lord. Uh, speak to hearts as well. Encourage us tonight, Lord, we pray for those that need a touch as well we pray that you would minister life um, we want to pray for those in florida particularly mm, yes, at this right. time yeah. facing the uh, hurricane over there lord and, and uh, uh, yeah. pastor chris mcfarlane and his wife yes, especially yeah. lord, and, mm. and different ones there and the, and the path of that and uh, the uh, the moses family mm. uh, pastor jeff brunton and the church yes, there lord yeah. uh, with mm. their um, ferris family as well Pastor yes. Ferris and his wife and just each one Lord that we know over there uh, protect Lord and uh, preserve life and and uh, and cover each one Lord yes, yeah. and use it for your glory's sake Lord that, that yes. would turn people to you to trust you to seek you to cry out to you Lord we pray uh, minister life there we pray yes, yeah. and for those that have been through it in the Central Europe Poland the Czech Republic Germany Austria a few mm. weeks ago the flooding Lord we pray that you'd be with them mm. uh, we pray for Israel for those mm. that are in uh, Lebanon as well this season yes. we want to lift up uh, Pastor Ben and Amana mm. uh, Pastor uh, Roman and Tofig and the three churches that we have in Israel as so Lord protect mm. each one Lord we yes, pray yeah. Thank you for the life and fellowship that we have with these people, Lord. Uh, protect each one now. Minister your life, Lord. Touch Sedoni as well, Lord, in Baltimore. And yes. heal there, Lord, for any others that need uh, uh, a touch of <coughs> encouragement. Uh, those in this very room that need healing, Lord, <laughs> we pray that you would be with each one of us now. Uh, and thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness now. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Okay, tonight we're going to read from uh, Psalm 84 for a, a little while at least. Um, it says, How amiable are thy tabernacles, O Lord of hosts! My soul longeth, yea, even fainteth for thy courts, for the courts of the Lord. Uh, my heart and my flesh crieth out for the living God. Yea, the sparrow hath found an house, and the swallow a nest for herself where she may lay her young. Even thine altars, O Lord of hosts, my King and my God, blessed are they that dwell in thy house. They will be still praising thee, mm. Selah. Blessed is the man whose strength is in thee, and in whose heart are the ways of them who passing through the valley of Baca make it a well. The mm -hmm. rain also filleth the pools. They go 
go from strength to strength, every one of them in Zion appeareth before God. We'll stop there for now. Mm. Uh, and let's pray. Mm. Yeah. Heavenly Father, we just thank you, Lord, for the words that we've read tonight already, yeah. uh, for this uh, a poem, Lord, a psalm, uh, words of life, words of encouragement, words that we we love Lord and we ask now that you would just fill us with your spirit uh, we are nothing we are nobody and we seek to have the guidance of your spirit without your spirit we we know nothing yeah. <laughs> we can say nothing mm. but Lord we thank you Lord that you are faithful right. to pour out your spirit on all flesh mm. <laughs> on all flesh whether that's uh, whether we have been in the flesh all day or whether we are spirit-filled. We thank you for your mercy, for your grace, for your forgiveness, for your truth, Lord. Uh, just minister life to us now. We pray in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Wow. <laughs> Where do we end up? Yeah, good question, isn't it? Obviously, ultimately, yes, we end up in heaven mm -hmm. as believers if we've trusted the Lord Jesus Christ as our Savior. But earthly places, you know, the places we find ourselves uh, during our lifetime uh, can be quite bizarre. We uh, <laughs> we don't always realize where, where we will be. Uh, we've probably been to places we never thought we would go to years yeah. ago, yeah. Uh, uh, ministered to people that we never thought we'd minister to uh, and uh, yeah, yeah absolutely. it's uh, it's an interesting point but there's one place that we come to the house of the Lord yeah. mm. and in one sense wherever we go physically wherever we go uh, on the earth the presence of the Lord is somewhere we seek and find and find peace and find comfort. Uh, this psalm is really talking about uh, the dwelling place, mm. dwelling place of the of the of the Lord, but but also our dwelling place. That actually we can spend time in the presence of the Lord. Yeah. Wow. I know there's uh, books being written on, on subjects like that. There's the, the, uh, the monk who, uh, I don't remember his name. Uh, Brother Lawrence. Brother Lawrence. Yes. yes. So you can find the Lord washing up and that sort of thing. Yeah. You, know, you can find mopping the, mopping the floors and all sorts of things like that. Yeah. Mm. Spend time with the Lord in doing these menial tasks, mm. in serving people, in visiting yeah. the sick, mm. in... Uh, different ones actually thinking about it we went to see Ruby I went to see Ruby on uh, Monday night on the way home and actually yeah it's a time filled with life and she was blessed to hear how people were doing at church and uh, it's good isn't it you know uh, just to spend time with someone but to spend time with the Lord uh, a love for God's house <laughs> the tabernacle as it was first of all, but then later the temple. Now it's interesting because um, this is a psalm of the sons of Korah. So uh, if it was a psalm of David, we would have said, well, there was no temple in those days. Mm. But actually, no, by faith, I was reading about it the other day, uh, um, David was, was planning a temple. Mm. and uh, desiring to build a temple and uh, yeah it's interesting the presence of the Lord and uh, and a place the tabernacle and then later the temple but also you know maybe a church mm. maybe our own church I don't know, I don't know whether you've ever uh, been in, in a church alone or in our church alone, some 
And it's funny, isn't it? Even though there might not be nobody there, there's still the yeah, the presence of the Lord. There's still a, a, an atmosphere there, mm. and it's uh, it's it's strange in a way, isn't it? Uh, but we still get that sense of God being there. And yeah, I mean, there's nowhere that we can go to flee from His presence mm. in one yeah. sense, yeah. but there can be places when we meet. With the Lord mm. uh, sure. mentions it here. In fact, I wasn't planning to speak on, about this because uh, we have another sort of direction uh, of thought tonight. But you know, the the sparrow and the swallow they found nest places, mm. but it's the altars. Even thine altars, mm. the sparrow and the swallow, they make a nest. They find a yeah. place to dwell bring up their young in the, the altars. But what is an altar? Yeah. Something you have to build mm -hmm. in your house to be spiritual. No, no. Is it Primrose was asking us about that the other week? It's like someone told her, you have to build an altar in your house, otherwise mm. it's... <laughs> uh, no, it's, it doesn't matter, does it? So, but actually, you know, in the Old Testament, before there was a tabernacle mm. and before there was a temple, the al an altar was a place where people met with the Lord. Mm. Mm. So you built built an altar and you made a sacrifice, yeah. and the, like the spirit of the Lord would be there uh, to accept it. And it's like, yeah, it was a way of of meeting the Lord, and uh, yeah. But the most important thing is we meet the Lord wherever it is. In the open air, in a church building, mm. Mm. in a in a in a temple, in a holy place, a traditional holy place. Mm. Uh, it's funny, as I said, the, we went to that uh, well at, at, over the weekend, and I'm thinking, it just it struck me as we were walking around it. I was thinking, people have baptized souls there into the kingdom of God for probably over a thousand years mm -hmm. and I think well, it's 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 crazy when you we think about it yeah but it's a blessing it's a blessing on the land even mm. uh, <laughs> mm. that, that, that we have places like that really yeah. and I think yeah but yes not that the place in itself is anything special but just somewhere that we meet God I mean, Jesus says, go into your closet, close the yeah. door and, and yeah. pray. Mm. It's like it doesn't have to be uh, like, you know, uh, a luxurious gold encrusted mm -hmm. uh, fresco adorned uh, <laughs> church with lots of ornate and beautiful settings, stained glass windows. Or <laughs> Someone suggested we should have stained glass windows when we have the windows done. <laughs> Extra costs, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> really? Mm. But, uh, <coughs> and also, someone has to design it. Mm. Yeah. Anyway, but uh, yeah, um, <laughs> but yeah, uh, you know, you, you go, yeah, go into your closet. Uh, the film, the war room. Remember that? Oh uh, yeah, yeah. You know, we, uh, this uh, old lady, if you any of you haven't seen it, an old yes, lady who has a prayer room in her yeah. house. It's a little room oh, that she makes into a prayer great, room. Great film. Yeah, and uh, yeah, wow. But yeah, um, it, yeah, it doesn't have to be special, but somewhere where we know that we meet the Lord. Huh. Mm. And you know, there's this sense here of longing, of a deep desire, of a desperation to be there in the presence of the Lord. My soul longeth, yea, even fainteth for thy courts, O Lord, O the, the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh crieth out for the living God. Yeah. Mm. There are times in our life when we cry out to God. Yeah. And, uh, and God is very real. Mm. Um, but yeah. And there are times where maybe we we have just have that deep longing to be mm. in church or be with people mm. that will encourage us, build us up, 
uh, at life uh, and just to be in the go- in pro- God's presence as well a deep longing for the Lord mm. <laughs> and he says you know even my heart and flesh mm-hmm. even cry out yeah. wow my flesh do we do we do we said all the things do we live in the flesh yes we do some of the time if we're honest we know that we do <laughs> we have an old sin nature yeah our heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked who can know it yeah. you know and it's like yeah so uh, uh, but our heart and our flesh still cry out to the lord mm. you know maybe even the worst parts of us sometimes mm. are the most desperate for the lord yeah why because actually only the lord only the presence of the lord will satisfy these yeah. things we have these desires and it's like oh you know if i only have this and that, or if i have more of that and more of that and it's like fine but it doesn't really satisfy but then we discover the presence of the lord and it's like actually now i can have peace mm. and just you know spend a little bit of time with him and it's like yeah it makes it all the difference to us mm-hmm. and it's like yeah my heart and my flesh yeah the, the sparrow and the swallow, small birds. The sparrow is sold mm. in the marketplace. Several of them for a farthing, but they're precious mm. in the sight of the Lord. You, you know, it's that simple, isn't it? I used to say that it was they were the most common birds. In this country, I, I don't know whether they still are. I had heard something by environmentalists that they were not as common as they used to be, but certainly they were one of the most common birds. Oh, Diane's watching. She'll probably be able to tell. Us. <laughs> <laughs> she's the, she's the, she is the bird expert, so she would probably know whether 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 they are still the most uh, popular, most uh, frequent visitors to a garden. But it's true, I, I used to see them a lot growing up. I don't remember seeing one for a while, but then again, our cat probably had them if we did. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, but um, true. yeah, uh, swallow those more is different, isn't it? It's a sign of summer, and it's like, yes. Yeah. And you do see those because they go around all the time eating insects in the summer. Mm. But it doesn't matter whether it's common or whether it's, it's rare whether it's a, a, a visitor oh, or whether it's someone who's there all the while in the background. Yeah. It's like still both, they find a place, a place, wow. a nest where they belong wow. and a That's place cool. where they can enter and have a, have a dwelling place, uh, dwelling with the, in the house of the Lord. That's wow. it, the house of the Lord. Their security in the house of the Lord. Blessed are they that dwell in thy house. They will be still praising thee. And it's interesting, we said um, earlier about this idea of David uh, wanting a temple. Mm desiring that there should be a temple a place for for god's house because he said well i built myself a house and it's like i should you know why do i why do i dwell in a nice house and there's nothing for the lord and it's like it's true sometimes we feel that that way it's like oh um you know i've got so much and i want to give something back and it's like why doesn't god's house have something nice and all that you know mm. and uh, again there are People who like to adorn our, our church and mm-hmm. make things and yeah. bring flowers and decorate and uh, and, it, and do th- different things and, and it's a blessing you know that that's mm. the same heart that David had in a way mm. uh, and we are always grateful for that uh, but yeah um, First Chronicles chapter twenty three I was reading you know, a few days ago. And something struck me there that I'd never noticed before, and it's always good when, when you see something you've never really thought of before. And it might be something that's obvious to everyone else, but 
not being the brightest button, or, you know, it's like, <laughs> I, it's like, oh, I never even thought of that, that before. Yeah. But actually, you know, it's like, well, First uh, Chronicles 23, we'll read from verse 24, and it says, These were the sons of Levi after their, the house of their fathers, even the chief of their fathers, and they were counted by number of names by their poles. And they did, that did the work for, for the service of the house of the Lord. For the age of 20 and upwards. For David said, The Lord God of Israel hath given rest unto his people, that they may dwell in Jerusalem forever. And also unto the Levites, they shall no more carry the tabernacle, nor any vessels of it, for the service thereof. For by the last words of David, the Levites were numbered from twenty years old and above, because their office was to wait on the sons of Aaron for the service of the house of the Lord in the courts and in the chambers and in the purifying of all the holy things, and the work of the service of the house of God. Okay. So it's interesting. And again, I suppose in one sense, it's obvious, isn't it? But it's something that I'd never really noticed before. That for years, when the... Levites, the tribe of Levi came out of the wilderness mm -hmm. and even before that they had the tabernacle they made the tabernacle and they carried it mm -hmm. and different sons of Levi had the job of carrying different things some had to carry the ark some had to carry the um, the, uh, the poles for the tabernacle, and others had to carry the, the the utensils, and it's like yeah, there were different. What's it? Was it Gershom, Mar Marari, and Kohath, or something like that. I can't remember actually without checking it. But anyway, they they were different sons of Levi. They all had a specific role, but it was to carry this 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 thing. It was to carry the tabernacle around, so that wherever they pitched the tent, they would have a place to meet with God, and they would have the tabernacle. Uh, yeah, and it's like yeah, they were they were given this thing, and maybe it was heavy. Maybe it was something they had to carry, mm. uh, like a little a bit of a burden yeah. for for a long time. But then suddenly, David says, "Okay, we're going to build a temple, and it will be a permanent place." For the Lord, no more temporary, no more carrying things around, and it and it meant for the Levites a change for them. Mm. So actually, they were not going to carry the tabernacle around anymore. And it's like again, it, it, you know, it, surely maybe to most people this was obvious, but it's something I never really thought about myself that you've spent years of your life carrying this stuff around and that was their job and that was their lot in life and we're carrying it all all the time and we have to set it up we have to put it up we have to put up the tent every morning and, and take things down and, and and bring the sacrifices in and and this is it it was a lot of physical work and then suddenly there's a temple built and David says you know actually God's giving his people God's going to give his people rest for this season now. You don't have to carry these things anymore. You don't have the Levites, they don't have to carry all of the burdens and all of the bits, all of the, the, the tranquilment for the temple anymore. Uh, they, there's, they can actually just, they can actually rest for a season. And it's why, yes, that the house of the Lord is there. And it's a dwelling place for the believers. 
And it's like when we come to God's house, there's that idea that actually, yes, these burdens that we've carried around for years, maybe even for generations in some cases, that was the case for the Levites. They're carrying these things for generations. And then David, David says, you know, ah, the Lord our God of Israel hath given rest unto his people that they may dwell in Jerusalem forever. <coughs> and that's it. And the temple is going to be built. And it's like, yeah. And it's like for ourselves, the weight that we carry around, the burdens, the, the cares and concerns. We come, we meet at the house of the Lord. We meet the Lord Jesus Christ. We, f we come to a place where we meet the Lord. And suddenly there's a sense of rest. There's a sense of relief. And it's like, yeah. Just like it says in Hebrews, we enter into rest. Hebrews uh, 4, 9, it says there, remaineth therefore a rest to the people of God. For he that is entered into his rest, he also hath ceased from his own works. As God did from his let us labour, therefore, to enter into that rest, lest any man fall after the same example of unbelief. Wow. Mm. So, yeah, there's rest. There's a, a time where we can actually let things relax a little bit. Let the, the Lord take the burdens. Let He look after us. Mm. Give our, our cares and concerns into His hands. Leave things in prayer. But it's interesting. It's like, yes, we cease from the old works, the old way of life, the old mm. doing. But they didn't completely stop, they got a new role. Suddenly it goes on and it says that actually the Levites, you know, from the word of David, the, the last words of David, the king, he gave them a new role. They were going to serve in the temple. And it's like, yeah. And like we, we just read in Hebrew, it's like, it's like, oh, it's like, well, we rest. Well, we're just going to do nothing for the rest of the day. No, that's not what it means, is it? It says, let us labor to enter into this rest. Actually, God's going to give us a new task. Yeah. He's got new things. He's, he's got good works for us to walk in them, isn't he? And he in Ephesians, Ephesians 2.10. He's got a, a, a calling ahead of us. He's got things planned for us. And it's like, yes, we, we cease from the old works, but there's a new way of life, a new identity. And it's different. Not in activity, there's still plenty to do. Still plenty of things to be going on with. But a new role. And uh, yeah, that's what the, the, the Levites had. Suddenly they went from uh, this traveling people carrying things around with them all the time to being actually dwelling in the mm. house of the Lord. Wow. Permanently in a place of rest at Jerusalem. And the temple was going to be established. And Solomon builds the temple. Mm. In the end, not David, but it's like, yeah. Uh, but David planned it. And with his last words, the death of the king gave rest to the priesthood. Wow. wow. So the death of the Lord Jesus Christ, the son of David, our king, brought rest to us mm. from our wow. works and our striving and our trying to be good. And it's like, yeah, this is the work. this is the peace that we enjoy now. This is the miracle that we have. But we have a high priest who ever liveth and intercedes for us. He's still alive. He he, he rose from the dead. So it wasn't uh wasn't uh, the end of it. The beloved, David means beloved, doesn't he? You know, the, the beloved, this is my uh, beloved son. He died. But Solomon, whose name means peace, he, he, uh, from, from Shalom. Um, but uh, yeah, but the king of peace. 
reigns afterwards. <laughs> and it's like, yeah, there's a new king. Uh, same dynasty, but a new king. And actually, yes, uh, uh, the Lord Jesus Christ dies, but, but a resurrected king brings us that peace. Wow. And, uh, yeah, blessed are they that, that dwell in thy house. They will be still praising thee. Selah. Mm. Selah, as we often said, it's stop and think, pause for a minute. Mm. Yeah. They will be still praising. What's going to keep us praising? Uh, mm. The presence of the Lord. Mm. Dwelling in the presence of the Lord. Uh, and the knowledge that the Lord, Lord Jesus Christ has gone before us. <laughs> Blessed is the man whose strength is in the, in whose heart are the ways of them who passing through the valley of Baca make a well. The rain also filleth the pools. Funnily enough, this was the verse I was going to start with tonight. <laughs> we sort of come to it more or less towards the end. Uh, <coughs> but it's like, yeah. Um, oh, by the way, it looks like uh, Diane says that Wren was the name of the last king of England. Those <laughs> 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 that were interested in the bird facts. <laughs> uh, but anyway. Uh, but yeah. Um, <laughs> but yeah, sorry. Uh, but yeah. <laughs> The Valley of Bacar, it's funny actually because I had studied this out and I had that <coughs> one. And then after I st came down uh, 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 last night, I turned on the news and they were talking about actually how, you know, there, were, there was uh, um, trouble obviously in the, the border with Lebanon and in northern Israel. And they said, and the Bekaa Valley has been... <laughs> so I don't know whether that's Beka or Baka, whether it's the same or not, but I was thinking it's interesting that yeah. immediately after I, 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 yeah. I, I'd uh, heard it... Uh, heard, I'd studied it out, I heard it mentioned, and I was thinking, oh, that's interesting. Now, of course, apparently, I, I didn't... Did, this until recently the Muslims claim that this is a mention of Mecca in the Bible Baka Mecca it's like oh Mecca's mentioned in the Bible no it's not absolutely not it's a different place different spelling and we know where the valley, the valley of Baka is but Baka means weeping mm. that's what it means in the Hebrew Baka the valley of weeping and it's like, yeah, blessed is the man whose strength and is, is in thee, in whose heart are the ways of them who passing through the valley of Baca make it a well. Now, in the, the, the valley of Baca, which is a place still yes. today in Israel, Apparently there are a lot of streams and wells, uh, springs coming out of the rock, even waterfalls, I think. And it's like, yeah, so it was a source of water. But it's one of those places where, uh, because of the minerals in there, sometimes the wa water tastes a bit salty. Mm. I don't know whether you've ever had uh, water from some of the spa towns in this country. It depends on the spa town, but some of them are some of them are very good, very clean, very clear. Uh, some of them do have a distinct taste. When I was here, lived in the Czech Republic, I went to Karla Vivari, which was in German is called Karlsbad, which is a famous spa town, and they even have a geezer there. They've got a, a, a very old ornate building around it, but every night you go there. And there's sort of warnings, and you can't get too near. And you, you go into this room, and there's this big circular hole in the middle of the floor. And you think, well, what's going on here? And then suddenly, whoosh, this geezer <laughs> comes up. And it goes right up and nearly uh, hits the ceiling of this tower that it's in. It's housed in, really. Mm. And then it'll just die back down again. And you think, wow, where did that come from? And they're hot springs as well. 
but you taste the water. In fact, I've still got, I don't know whether I've still got a little cup to tell you about it. It's a blue, funny shaped <laughs> flat cup with a spout that is a handle and a little. I'll have a look when I go home. We might have chucked, might have chucked it out. We got to see it. But you're supposed to fill it with the water, and and you sip it oh, through it's the. That weird one. Yeah, that funny. <laughs> you know the one that I mean. Yeah. Like My it. wife knows the one. That I mean. It's a very. Fit, it's like a flat cup. It's like a sort of almost like a, it's like so like it's being sat on. It's squashed flat, and it has the, it has a, a funny sh handle, but the handle is also a spout. And so you can suck the water up and it goes round the handle and through you. <laughs> but, but the water there is disgusting. I, have to say. I mean, I know people bottle it and it's like, and it's like, oh, it's good, it's good. And that. But it's very tight, they're very salty. Yeah. And, uh, and warm as well. Yeah, yeah. And it's like, mm, yeah, okay, fine. Uh, it's, uh, it's an experience. <laughs> there you go. It's I wasn't experience. actually planning to speak about any of this. I don't really know why we got there. But actually, no, I do know why, why, why I've heard she mentioned it. Because Baka, the valley of Baka, there are wells that are slightly salty like that. And because it's salt water, this is why it got the reputation for being a valley of Kura. Hmm. So that's where the name came from. But the Valley of Tears, because tears are salty. Ah, okay. Yeah, that's yeah. it. Isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, so yeah. The Valley of Bakar, the Valley of Tears, the Valley of Weeping. But it says we passed through it. Mm. Now, we've made our dwelling place in the house of the Lord. So we have a place that we go back to and we dwell, which is the presence of God. But as we go through this life, maybe we pass through a season yeah. of weeping, a season of difficulty, <coughs> challenges, tears, sadness. But it says that they, they make it a well and the rain filleth the pools. So yeah. There's a well there. There's a source of water. There's there's a source of sustenance, but actually the the the, the tears, the weeping, can be part of that. Mm. We make it a, a source of the strength that we have in the Lord. We give our weeping to the Lord. It says that He bottles our tears. Mm. Yeah, He 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 bottles our tears. He, the hairs of our head are numbered. He bottles our tears. Uh, he knows our, our going out and our coming in. It, it, like he, he looks after us in every way. But um, yeah, passing through the valley of Bakar, make, make it a well. The rain also filleth the pools. Mm -hmm. Now again, the rain, it's like, oh, it's cold. It's dreary. It's like, oh, I want to rain in again. <laughs> and it's like that sort of misery. Oh, it's depressing. But no, but the point is the rain is necessary yeah. for something to grow. Mm. It waters uh, us, it waters plants, it gives us life uh, on, on the planet. And it's like, yeah, it's part of life. We go through these seasons where maybe it's dismal, maybe it's grey, maybe it's suffering, maybe it's weeping, maybe there's a lot of sorrow involved, maybe there's a lot of challenges involved, mm. but... Mm. Becomes a pool. It fills a pool, mm. and it, it can become a place that is a source for us. We can go back there and say, "Well, God brought me through the valley of Baca." They go from strength to strength. Every one of them in Zion appeareth before God. Wow. So. Through the valley of weeping, mm. but back up to Zion. Zion, the place where David had his his dwelling. His that was the city of David, the oldest part of Jerusalem. Mm. Uh, still today, actually, probably maybe the the least populated today. I think because 
the Temple Mount, which is Mount Moriah, that's quite built up. And then some of the other mountains of Jerusalem are, are quite prominent as well. But Mount Zion, it sort of becomes synonymous for the whole of Jerusalem. Yeah, right? it definitely is. And, uh, you know, but it's like, yeah, it, it was David's place. Uh, David's place and David's capital yeah. and it's like yeah so we go through the valley of weeping but then we go from strength to strength yeah. Yeah. and we end up at the city of the great king remember yeah. that yeah. Mount Zion the size of the north the city of yeah. the great king yeah. there's that Psalm 38 mm -hmm. but yeah well Psalm goes on actually we didn't quite read there but maybe we'll just briefly mention it before we end but it's like mm -hmm. you know verse 10 for a day in thy courts is better than a thousand and I'd rather be a doorkeeper in thy house in the house of my God than to dwell in the tents of wickedness mm -hmm. wow yeah, yeah. just mm -hmm. a doorkeeper don't have to be anything special mm -hmm. just mm -hmm. on the edge just <coughs> a foot in the door mm -hmm. is enough but actually, yeah, just to be there in God's presence, oh. it's, it's worth it. Mm. And it's better than anywhere else. Mm. Let's pray. Anyway. Mm. Heavenly Father, we just thank you, Lord, that we come to your presence. We come to a place where we can dwell. We come to a place where we can build a nest, make a home, uh, and, and find rest. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that you give us a place that can be our own the place where we can meet with you and thank you Lord that the Lord Jesus Christ gave his life for us we meet you at the cross we know that you're there and you change as you give us a new direction yeah. you give us a place of rest the old lugging of burdens is gone the old wandering is gone but actually we have an established house, a dwelling place where the presence of God is. And we thank you, Lord, for that. And we thank you, Lord, that you put us in your kingdom and nobody can take us out. Nobody can snatch, you out, uh, snatch us out of your hand. And you have done it by your work on the cross, by the, the finished work of Jesus Christ, by the perfect sacrifice. The altar is complete. The old altars are finished. But we have a new relationship through the cross. Thank you, Lord. We love you, Lord. Fill us with your life, Lord. And, and guide us as we go through the, the, the struggles uh, that they become uh, a, a pool and a resource for us. Yeah. But also <coughs> that we would find the new calling you have for us heart in your ways thank you lord thank you for the love of the lord jesus christ and we pray if there's anyone out there watching who has never experienced this doesn't know what it's like to trust christ as their savior and to have a place where they can meet with god and experience that peace that rest newness of life well we just pray that this would be the time when they say lord i want to know you i want to meet with you uh, I want to discover your dwelling place. Come into my heart. Be my saviour. I need a saviour. I need forgiveness. I need my life to be turned around. And I believe that you are the one that can do this. That you gave yourself as a ransom for me. As a payment for me. And that your life is well pleasing. In the sight of God. And your death was well pleasing. I believe that you rose from the dead to be with me that I can be with you Lord fill me with your life and your spirit Lord touch hearts now Lord we pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ Amen, Amen. <coughs> and if you said that prayer for the first time then uh, please either get in touch or let someone else know and find someone who will encourage
energy. Mm. Wow, yeah, probably turn it off for now. Uh, mm. Take care, I'll see you again soon. And uh, Diane. <laughs> yes, both Diane, whoever else might be watching as well. Uh, see you soon, bye bye. <laughs>